examining the situation of indigenous peoples around the world and uh, writing reports and uh, making recommendations uh, about those situations, how, how to address violations of the human rights of indigenous peoples. James and I are the UN Special Rapporteur on the Rights of Indigenous People. He is in Canada. He is here for a tour, and he is going to hold up the mirror to Canada. Lauren Gunter joins me now to talk more about this. And Lauren, we, we've chatted about Mr. Anaya before. He is, in many respects, an activist. Do you have any hope that this will be um, an impartial look at Canada? No, no, I don't. Uh, uh, and, you know, it, it makes me wonder from time to time why it is that the federal government accepts the requests from these special rapporteurs to... Uh, uh, rapporteurs to, to allow them in to, to just make a, a mass semantic. Rapporteur must be French for annoying busybodies because that's all these people are. They, they're poke noses. They come in and they start rummaging around. They listen to only the the, the, uh, the witnesses and, and the organizations that they agree with, and then they, uh, they you know, it could save us all a lot of time and trouble because he could probably write his his uh, report before he arrives, and he's already made up his mind what he's going to say, and that is that Canada should be ashamed of itself and it should be doing vastly more for First Nations. Well, uh, and and I think he's good. also going to try to, uh, to put it in football terms, uh, move the yardsticks a bit in terms of... Uh, how Canada interacts with Native populations. By the way, let's, let's just note that today is the 250th anniversary of the Royal Proclamation, and that deals with issues of treaty rights and land rights in Canada. And one of the things that Anaya said on his way in in, in interviews is that uh, we need to ask for consent before engaging in natural resource extraction from traditional lands. And I find that interesting because he wasn't talking about reserve lands. He's talking about you need consent from off-reserve land from local native populations before you can mine on crown lands or harvest timber or what have you. That seems to me like it's an expansion of treaty rights. And he starts using terms like successor nations uh, so that uh, non-native Canadians are part of a successor nation that, that came in and pushed aside the the existing nation. And, you know, there may be some historical uh, truth to that, although it's interesting to note that nearly every First Nation in Canada displaced some other, even firster nation, uh, for the territory that they occupied when the Europeans arrived. So, you know, there was an awful lot of shunting and shifting about even before Europeans arrived. So the whole concept of successor nation is probably historically inaccurate. But this idea is, uh, you're absolutely right, an expansion of the idea of treaty rights to, to go back to, well, all of it was ours. And so, therefore, if you want to do any kind of resource development during uh, or, or any resource development now, you have to say, well, what peoples were here in 1491, uh, and, uh, and, and should we ask them what we need to be doing with resource development? And it's just, you know, it, 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 at the heart of it, the thing that bothers me the most is just another one of these shift the blame to somebody else games. It, the, the fact that First Nations are impoverished, the fact that they live in destitute conditions, the fact that they have a rampant social problem is all someone else's fault. It's all the fault of non-Aboriginals, and only non-Aboriginals would honor treaty rights or expand them to, to these new these new rights that Anaya look, it seems to be looking at when he gets here. Then everything would be fine. And at the core, it doesn't matter what monies you throw at or, or new rights we throw at First Nations. Unfortunately, far too many First Nations, not all of them, but of the 630 uh, reserves we have in the country, probably two thirds of them are dysfunctional. And until that's solved, it doesn't matter how generous non-Aboriginal governments and society are. Thanks to yeah. Well, uh, I want to play a clip of uh, Sean Atlio, president of the Assembly of First Nations. I find the movie a uh, uh, fairly practical man, uh, somebody that... Very thoughtful uh, guy, like yeah. him a lot. So he, he's not a radical. Here's what he had to say at a news conference about this today, and then I want your reaction. The special rapporteur's visit is going to be an important moment. Canada has a, a choice as to how it responds and receives it. I would encourage uh, the government, I would encourage Canadians to welcome it. Um, I think as Canadians, Canadians have had a, a, a feeling, a sense of being human rights champions around the world, perhaps rightfully so. This is, however, a moment of looking in the mirror and being more self-reflective. So, you know, I can see where Atlio's coming from that. I really can. I just wish that... Uh, 
Anaya wasn't uh, the activist. I, I wish there was an impartial person coming because there are people with some legitimate complaints. There are people that are grievance mongers. Hear them out, give an actual report on what's going on, but I just don't get the feeling uh, that that's what we're headed for, Lauren. Well, I mean, Atleo himself, as chief of his own First Nation, was a roll-up-your-sleeves kind of guy. Let's, let's find out what we can do on or near the reserve. Let's find out the companies that are investing in it. Let's work with them and try and find solutions. That's exactly what's needed. But he rides a tiger in that about two-thirds of the chiefs who elect him to become the, the, uh, the grand chief of the Assembly of First Nations, the national chief, it, uh, are, are in, the, in the victim's rights game. And yeah. so, he, you know, he has, he has a real problem there. He's, he's caught between the two. And so I think he's wrong that the rapporteur is going to be important. But who knows? I mean, maybe it, it, it does spark some other chiefs of his nature with, you know, the, the more pragmatic and practical ones to, uh, to come along. But my guess is Anaya is just going to come and say, you know, Ottawa's abusing First Nations. Nothing is happening. They need to spend more billions. Uh, and we need blah, to blah, expand blah, 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 international blah. law. That, that's yeah. going to be the one yeah. that really gets me. But don't forget, Lauren, we can't waste all our, our, our time talking about this because we got more special rapporteurs coming, including ones to tell us how evil we are towards women in this country. Absolutely. So that's coming up later this fall if you haven't had en Absolutely. enough of them. <laughs> and, and not to mention the one as to how bad we are about sharing our food. Oh, this is true. Great talking to my friend. We'll chat right. soon. Good night, Brian. Check out liliespad.ca, including for Lauren Gunter's latest column.